Today I'm joined with President Rosalind Reichert and we are going to um, talk about the changes on campus. Thank you so much for coming out today. Um, we're going to start off with just a real quick question. You've been here for almost three years. Are you tired of us yet? No, not at all. And <laughs> I, I joined the college in August of 2006, just, just a little over two years. So this mm -hmm. is the beginning of my third year. Beginning of your third year. I, every year is exciting and I'm having a wonderful time. You've done a lot since you've been here. Um, what do you do for fun around campus? I think a lot of students and people around campus would like to know what does President Rosalind Riker do for fun? Well, what I really like to do around campus is walk and talk with the students. But when I'm off campus, I, uh, we have a lake house at Smith Mountain Lake, and I like to go there, and I'm out on the lake quite a bit, and I like to read and, and uh, do a lot of different things. So uh, those are some of the things I do for fun. All right, well, a new school year has just begun. Um, what are you looking forward to about this year? There's so many different projects uh, uh, going on that uh, it's hard to pick just one. I think you know about the opening of the, the stadium, which is occurring this coming Saturday, the, the grand opening of Byers that's occurring this Wednesday. So those two buildings are wonderful. And of course, right now I'm living in a trailer, as you probably know, <laughs> up on the hill. And so we're excited about getting Wiley and that renovation completed and being able to move in there by the end of the fall semester. And there's a lot of changes going on in the curriculum as well. You probably know about changes in the general education program and the faculty working on all of that, trying to expand the study abroad opportunities for the students. So we're working on an institute for public policy to expand the Appalachian Center for Community Service. So a lot of initiatives this year, uh, a lot of different exciting things going on. Oh, definitely. People can definitely tell changes are happening. Um, just to hit the Fred Self Stadium again, the big opening the of grand the stadium. Opening. Um, everyone's seen work going on there for months now, That's almost right. a year, and you know, it's the big stadium opening is this weekend. Are you excited? Is Very there going to be a big so. festival or something? There is. I mean, there'll be some surprises for you, so you need to come on out. But um, of course, uh, we've got a uh, general ceremony in terms of remarks that we'll make, but you know, both the soccer and the football players will be there, because certainly soccer, men and women's soccer, football, and students doing intramurals will be using the field as well. So come on out and you might be surprised by a few things. We're going to have a good time and celebrate the opening. Well, I'll definitely be there. Sure. Um, also, according to football, we've got some rumors going on around campus about possibility for a new homecoming tailgating policy. Ah, uh, yes, that is but correct. we might have you address that. Absolutely, I'm happy to do that. Um, one of the things I was, was struck with when I came to campus was that we, we do not allow alcohol on campus, which is absolutely fine. It relates back to our traditions and our history of being connected with the Methodist Church. So officially we have no alcohol on campus, however it was clear to me that we did have alcohol on campus for some individuals when it came time for football. I'm bothered by that. I'd like to make sure that we follow the policies. And so I worked with the trustees to change the policy, the college policy, which still prohibits alcohol on campus for everyone except for special events that the president approves. Mm -hmm. And right now they've only allowed me to approve tailgating time before a football game. And so we can have alcohol officially on campus only for those football Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And connected with that, we're going to be having tailgating areas mm -hmm. where we are regulating what happens for the safety of, of all of the folks that are involved. Of course, if you're under 21, you still cannot drink. Um, but we will have that, those tailg tailgate areas and try to manage that a little bit better and try to make sure that folks are safe. All right, so the, that has officially been passed? Officially. So there's going to be a starting separate tailgating section mm -hmm. for 21 year olds starting this year? It, it starts this, this year and the tailgate area will be the area near the football field mm -hmm. that you've seen often. There will also be a non-alcoholic tailgate area that's up near the Institutional Advancement House. Mm -hmm. um, and the tailgate area is primarily for alumni but students of, of age right. can join in if, if they're accompanied by you know, folks that are able to support them in that. We're also going to be making sure that everyone has non-alcoholic beverages as well, trying to be as uh, supportive as we can. Absolutely. All right, well also another rumor going around campus is student evictions and frozen meal plans. Have, student yeah, evictions. Well, student evictions and frozen meal plans is what we've heard, that students mm. who have not paid their bills um, are, you know, having their keys taken and or their meal plans frozen. Is there Right, I think what, what that's probably related to, I don't know of anyone that actually was evicted uh, or anyone uh, you know, who actually uh, got into serious difficulty with it, but one of the things that we're trying to do is make sure that students manage their debt appropriately. And one of, one of the things we'd gotten into that probably wasn't very healthy was allowing students to not pay their bills, instead build up debt, and then eventually sometimes the students would not be able to meet that debt, might not graduate, may have to drop out. So we're trying to get them to recognize what the payments are going to be up front and pay them on time and make sure that they have the appropriate um, paperwork that, that uh, verifies that they've done that. 
And so we were having some trouble because that's a little change in character, especially for the upperclassmen. It wasn't so much of a difficulty for the freshmen because they hadn't been here before. And um, we were trying to get a hold of them, and so we were giving deadlines and trying to get them in. So it was more to manage the debt, making sure that students were able to manage their debt. All right. All right, well, talking about this year, 2008, it's a big year. It's an election year. That's true. Um, talking about women in politics, obviously you are a woman of definite um, mm -hmm. high, higher standing. You're right. very high up on the chain. Um, what do you, how do you feel about the glass ceiling, the concept of women breaking through that ceiling? Because this is an election year and obviously women have been a big part of the election and obviously we have a vice presidential candidate that's for the right. first time right. who's a woman. Well, I'm very excited about the attention that's been, been brought to um, very, very qualified women uh, to, you know, to support them to be part of the political process. And I think that that's something that we always need to be working on. I, I think that uh, you know, the gra glass ceiling is there to some extent. Um, I think that uh, we need to make sure that we're supporting women to, to break through that ceiling, and um, this is a, an indication of it. So I think the more um, cracks that we find in that ceiling, the better it can be, and I think it's an exciting year for, for leadership. Definitely. Um, what about you? What were your struggles to come to your point of power? As oh, I'm sure I have all kinds of stories I can tell you. <laughs> um, you know, you have to understand I'm also a mathematics professor. It's uh -huh. very unusual to have women in, in mathematics yeah. and science. And so there were um, several challenges I had along the way. Um, but again, what I think is most important for any woman to do is to, to have confidence in their ability, uh, to make sure that they are exhibiting that confidence and, and make sure that they have the experience, the skills to back it up and, and not be afraid to just step forward and uh, make sure that you're, you're letting folks know what you can accomplish and I think that goes a long way. Definitely and you have definitely given women a definite role model on this campus and probably on the whole East Coast. Um, we're about running out of time but I just wanted to give you maybe a minute to, to tell listeners, viewers, maybe something about you they think that you think you, they might want to know, something interesting <laughs> about you that, that nobody knows. Um, my goodness gracious, I was asked a question like this uh, by a, a, a magazine, a uh, person who was interviewing me for a magazine and I told them about how I had this dream when I was a, a little kid uh, of being a, a cowgirl and uh, what that meant and so I've got all kinds of rumors out there about uh, how I wear uh, boots and have my six shooters but um, I really do enjoy um, riding horses and uh, have gone to dude ranches which I really think are great fun. If you ever want to have a great vacation I can tell you about wonderful dude ranches out there so that might surprise some folks. Well thank you so much for coming out today. It's my first interview on the island so it was so great having you. Well thank you. Thank you so it. much.